Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Focus on Greatness podcast. I am your host, Haim Roche, and I am truly, truly, truly excited about our conversation on tonight. I have uh, missed y'all so much, uh, missed y'all so much greatly, and it's been exciting. It's been a moment of where I've been able to kind of get some uh, time to step back a little bit and relax and uh, also get some new, you know, viewpoints and new ways of le- being able to see things and look at things. Um, but I'm excited to be back and be in front of y'all and be able to speak with y'all and share some wisdom, some insights and things that I believe that God wants us to be able to know in this season. So So we're going to dive right into this conversation because I've been waiting to be able to share this with you. Um, And tonight's conversation, or whenever you're listening to this in your car, uh, we're going to deal with leave no man behind. There was an article that I read by Mountain Technical Institute that I want to be able to read. And the the actual writer of this is uh, Charles Bozeman. I believe I'm saying that last name right. But I believe it's a powerful context that will give us uh, kind of like a leeway to what we're going to be dealing with and talking about on tonight that I believe is going to help us to have some understanding and to be able to give us guidance on what we need to be doing and how we should probably be functioning in this season, as well as I want you to really understand and know know the heart uh, beat of this podcast. So this is where this is it's two parts of this article that I really wanted to pull out. Um, I'm going to leave the the links in the show notes so you'll be able to go and check the whole thing out if you choose. But I believe it's a powerful statement. And so the first part of it, it says this, leave no man behind is a creed, an ethos often repeated and adhered to by various units and soldiers. The interpretation of the phrase is applied to the treatment and extraction of the seriously wounded, the recovery of the body of a military member killed in action, and the attempts to rescue or trade for prisoners of war. Despite being widely known and repeated in the U.S. military, leave no man behind, is not represented in any official military doctrine or publication. It is a culture of the armed service which carries significant risk. Here it is later on in the article. This is what it says. It says, as found by a study by U.S. Army War College, combat motivation in today's soldiers, the motivation has not changed in war over time. They fight for one another, build through the bond of shared misery, loyalty, and love, It is not surprising then that soldiers would go to such lengths lengths, to never leave a man behind despite the risk and possibility of failure. I want to read this this part again because I believe it's important to what we're going to be talking about on tonight. It says the fight for one another built through the bond of, of shared misery, loyalty and love. It is not surprising then that soldiers would go to such lengths to never leave a man behind despite the risk or possible failures. Why is this important in this conversation on today? I believe it's important because reality is I believe we're all on this journey together. Surely when you're talking about as a man, we're on this journey together. And, and, and reality is all of us have similar experiences. We might not have the same experience, but we have similar experiences. And in these experiences that we go through and that we share and walk in in life, these experiences have us to have some form of commonality that we deal with. And the reality of what I have realized over time and over my and over the time of my life and seeing different things is that this statement shouldn't only be for the military. It shouldn't just be for our armed services. It shouldn't be for just for the people that are sacrificing in their life and taking their their life into these measures of, of, of situations that they do in war and different areas and different things. It should not just be for them. The reality is this statement should be for all of us. This should be for you and for me. 
This should be something that we constantly look at and walk through in every day of our lives. How can I say that? Well, for me, uh, just to kind of give you a backstory about my own personal life, um, I was raised by uh, my beautiful mother, um, and she was a, she was uh, she raised me as a single parent. And she raised me all the way, I would say, as a single parent until I was about 15, 16 years old. One of the things that I love that my mom did is that she made sure that she surrounded me around men. She put me around um, older men, which, you know, it helps with the personality that I have. Um, she put me around older men. She made sure that I was in rooms with men. The reason why was because she said that she understood that there were certain things that she could not teach me. There were certain things that she was not going to be able to pour into me and give unto me. Now, I did have a relationship and still do have a great relationship with my father, Um and, and, and I had these moments when I was not with him or when I was not able to see him, I still had in my every day to day life, I had men that were around me that were able to pour into me and that were able to walk with me and, and give me advice and, and show me and give me direction in certain things of my life that I was going through. And, and what I realized is all of those aspects and pieces of my life where I have went through certain journeys and certain things and certain ups and certain downs, I've always had a man that was there to guide me and to keep me and to build me up. And what I realize is this statement that I'm talking about, leave no man behind, I've been able to live this. I've been able to see men pour into me when when I wanted to basically be by myself, being honest, when when it was moments where I, I, I felt like I was all alone or that I was going through something that no other man understood until I was able to get into these moments and have these deal, these real uh, down to earth conversations, I was able to get the assistance and the help. Why? It wasn't just because they were older. No, it, that, that helped in the conversation. It was because they were men just like me that has been on the same journey, that have walked in some of the same paths and that have went through some of the same struggles that we go through as men. And so going through these conversations and having these conversations and having these helps took me or made me the type of man that I am today, that I have the mindset and the heart that I don't want to leave any man behind. Now, one of the things for me, again, being raised by my mother, um, I, 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 I heard or ha I had this piece where even though there were men that were pouring into me, it's a difference from having a man outside your home versus having a man in your home. Um, and so being raised with just me and my mom, there were certain things that I could not see uh, that a man would do in certain situations that we were dealing with in our personal life. And, and so while we were going through these things and I'm observing and watching how she dealt with things or how certain things happened, there were certain things that I did not gather. There were certain things that as a man that I did not pick up because of this aspect of. I didn't have any man in the home. But what happened is as I got older, I was able to gain some mentors. I was able to gain some men that were around me that were able to pour into me and show me how to be able to walk in certain steps and how to be able to do certain things. And so every time that I felt like I was in a place where I was in a struggle, I realized that in those moments, there were men that were gathered around me that would uplift me, that would that would not leave me behind and behind in the mindset, behind in certain behaviors. They would not leave me behind, but they would continually walk with me. And so this concept of leave no man behind is a reality. How do I know that this is a reality? In the book of 1 Samuel, uh, chapter 22, and I'm going to calm down and I'm going to relax a little bit. Um, in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 22, verses 1 and 2, I want to read this context because it's about a man by the name of David. Now, David, for me, I believe is a great picture of, in the scriptures, a great, great picture of the journey of a man. I believe he, he, his life and the struggles and the things that he has went through, the ups and downs that he has had to go through, the, some of the challenges, some of the things that he went through in his family life, the, the women life. I mean, all these different aspects we can walk down through. And I believe he's a great example of what this looks like in reference to as a man. But in 1 Samuel chapter 22, there's something that has occurred. 
uh, right before we get to this context of scripture, uh, David has been living in the house with this man by the name of King Saul. And Saul has been overly and over and over again trying to kill David. And now David is on the run. And David runs into this cave called Adullam. And there's something that ends up happening that I believe I want to be able to point out in this conversation on tonight that I believe will be helpful for where we're trying to go. In 1 Samuel chapter 22, verses 1 through 2, this is what it says. It says, David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him. And he became a captain over them, and there were with him about 400 men. Now, I, I want to I wanna, I wanna break this context down. David has now ran because of his problem and his situation. Now, about not just family members, but 400 other men ran to the same place that David was at, ran to this cave. And while they're in this cave, there's things that is happening. But I want to be able to point something out because it's, it's vitally important, the type of men that came. Everyone that was in distress, everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him. The reality of what this scripture is showing us is there was a certain group of individuals. There was a certain type of men that had commonality one with another that gathered to one place so that they can be able to not not for not per se get get assistance only from David. No, they, they gathered all in one place because they understood, one, where and who David was. David was able to give them insight because of his journey. But they also understood that in this group of individuals that came together, that are coming together, we can get the type of assistance that we need to be able to develop and grow. Later on, as you if you continue to read in the book of First Samuel, if you continue to read past chapter 22 and continue to look at the journey and continue to look at these 400 men, what you recognize is they are no longer in the same category. They're, ne they're no longer named about these men that are discontented or, or are dealing with uh, distress or in debt or in a struggle or or trying to figure out their way or are trying to understand how do I do this thing called fatherhood or or trying to figure out how do I do this thing called being a husband? What 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 is it? What does it look like in reference to me building for my legacy? How, what does this look like in reference to building for for all the things that I'm trying to do and create in my life? What how do I walk into these journeys? I, I, I understand that as a man that I'm walking in is, but some steps I don't know how to take, and some things I just don't know how to do. They they're all they're they're gathered together, but they don't stay in that place. Why? Because because I believe that in this context, that as they continue to go on in life, as they continue to push forward, as they continue to walk in their journey, they realize we cannot leave no man behind. I understand you got wisdom in finance, but brother, I'm struggling in my marriage. You might be able to help me in this thing. As we do this thing called life together, we as men have to have the mindset that we leave no man behind. My response responsibility. My job as doing this podcast, the purpose of the heartbeat of this podcast is every man that I know that is that has the potential to walk in their greatness. Every man that I know that has the potential to create something that is going to impact this world and impact the lives of their family and their friends. The, 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 the men that I am going to be able to interact with and be able to see on a daily basis, I want to make sure that those men never feel left behind. They never feel that they are alone in this journey. They never feel that they don't have a place or someone that is supporting them, that is pushing them, that is encouraging them, that is pouring into them. They, they will never feel that way because why? The heartbeat of this is don't leave no man 
behind. Nobody. I don't want to leave nobody behind. I don't care what your age is. I don't care what your demographic is. I don't care what your race is. I don't care what your religion is. No man left behind. Why? Why do we feel that it might be okay to leave men behind? Why do we feel that we have to do this thing called life by ourselves? Why do we feel that you you have to figure out every niche and everything of how to be able to do this thing called life? I don't believe that we're supposed to do it this way. I believe that the way that God designed all of this to be is that my greatness helps your greatness. And your greatness helps my greatness. I have, I have not arrived all the way to the end. Neither have you. So we need one another so that we can be the type of men that we're supposed to be. So that we can make the type of impact that we're supposed to be. I do know that there are women that listen to this podcast as well and, and realize, and I know you, you can understand that you can't do this journey by yourself. So we can't leave no man behind. We can't leave them behind. Because any man that is left behind is not able to walk in the thing that they need to make their legacy, to make their impact. They're not able to be able to do the thing that they were created and called to do. So that means that there's somewhere in the earth, there's somewhere in the world that is left with a void, with an, with an openness that that man was supposed to feel. So no, we can't leave any man behind. I know you might be hurt. I don't want to leave you behind. You might be stronger than me. I still don't want you to leave, be left behind in no area of your life. No matter what it is, you cannot be and you will not be left behind. I, I want you to do this for me. I want you throughout the rest of this week. No matter when you listen to this, give yourself some time. I, I, whenever you listen to it, if you're, I know some people you listen to this on your way home. Some people you're probably listening to this when you got home from work. And I want to encourage you. I want you to encourage you this statement that you will not be left behind. The greatness tribe of men that are gathering together are coming together so that they can make sure that no man is left behind. That means from, from every generation should not be a man where they are left behind. So here's my challenge to you. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to take the time. Take the time to pay attention to the men that you interact with. Take the time to pay attention to the men that are around you, friends, family, co-workers, whatever it is, men that you see on the streets, whatever it is, men that you might interact at a gas station or, or see when you're in the grocery store, take the time to make sure that no man is left behind. If you see a person or a man or a person that interacts with you or that you see that is struggling in an area that you are strong in, Pour into them. Just give them a nugget. Just drop them some wisdom. Why am I saying this? I remember, I remember there was in my personal journey, um, there was there was some times in my relationship, uh, in my marriage, me and my wife at this point of time are about to walk into 18 years of marriage. And I remember when we first got married. I mean, boy, you talk about green. I didn't know anything about marriage, anything about a relationship. Not when you're talking about at that level. I had been in relationships and, you know, done different things or whatever. But but the reality was and when you're talking about this level of, of a relationship that you're saying that you want to do till death do you part, long lasting. I knew nothing about how this worked. Again, I'm being raised in a single parent home. I'm, 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 my mom gets married or remarried at the uh, at my age of 15, 16 years old. Um, they're having a great relationship. All of these different things are happening or whatever. But in reference to knowing what to do in certain situations, again, I did not see these things. So there were things that I didn't know about. I, I wasn't raised on a context of somebody teaching me about a budget. So I didn't know that I wasn't raised in, in, in this, in this context of, you know, your needs, their needs, 
my my compassion and my heart um, walking into my marriage was realizing or, or having this mindset that being very honest, I'm going to do whatever it takes. So I do not. We do not have the context of saying we got a divorce. I don't want to do that. I don't want to have a divorce. So I went into the relationship and I went into the marriage feeling like the only way that this is going to happen or not happen is I try to give do whatever I can to make her happy. But then I had men in every category. I had men that would come to me and say, hey, son, this is what you probably want to do. Hey, my friend, hey, man, this is what this is what I would do. And this is how I did X, Y and Z. I had mentors that that poured into me about about really self evaluation and self love and recognizing your personal worth. And what you contribute to the relationship and, and how you're supposed to have this and how you're supposed to have that. Again, I, I, I had never been in this level of a relationship. I didn't know what this really looked like. I heard context and conversations and, and different statements. But when it came to certain pieces, like how do you write and create a vision for your family when you've never had to do that for yourself? I didn't know how to do certain certain one of these certain things. So because I didn't know some of these pieces, what ends up would end up happening is I felt like I was behind. But then I had men that I went through the journey that had some time underneath their belt that had went through different experiences. That will pull me to the side and say, hey, listen, this is how you do this. This, let me show you how to create you a vision. This is, this is how you are able to do this thing called a marriage. This is what that looks like. Because with me and my wife, uh, I see you, honey. Thank you so much. Um, I'm glad to be back. Um, with me and my wife, one of the things that we, when we first got married, one, I got married at the age of 21. I was a young buck. Got married at the age of 21. Again, didn't really know anything about um, marriage and, and this type of level of relationship. But then we went straight into being married and being in ministry. We walked right into the same year that we got married is the same year we walked into doing youth ministry together. So you have all these different dynamics that are happening in my life. And one thing after another, one piece after another, I felt I was left behind because I did not, I knew, I felt in my mind, I didn't know some of these things that people are doing naturally. But then there was one man after another man, one mentor after another mentor that gave me insight, gave me, gave me some wisdom, showed me how to do these different steps. It, they were, there were caves that I were able to walk into like, the, like David's men that I was able to sit down for a moment and be able to learn from different men in my life. And they allowed me to be able to catch up. And in me being able to catch up again, I was now not left behind. So let me ask you, honestly, do you feel there's areas in your life where if you just had the knowledge, if you just had the insight, if you just had the guidance, you feel and know you would be way ahead of your time. You will be way farther than where you currently are. And if you can say yes, honestly, I, I still have areas that my mentor is still pouring into me and still guiding me through things. Because why? There are some things that we didn't learn in life. And we're not blaming anybody for why we didn't get them. And we're not going to go through the whole train of saying, listen, I wish they would have. And I wish this would have happened. And I wish they would have did said this and did. All of those things are, are, are not even important in the area of your life currently. What happened, happened. And what didn't, didn't. The question at this point is, what are you going to do next? And I'm saying every Monday at 6.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time and probably other days throughout the week that you'll see me is for the purpose is I don't want to leave no man behind. I don't want no man to be able to say that, listen, nobody reached back to me and came and got me. Nobody helped and poured into this area. Nobody showed me how to be able to be a good father. Nobody gave me the insight on how to have an effective relationship, not just marriage. 
friendships, relationship with co-workers, relationship in your family. Nobody helped me to be able to heal in the areas that I was dealing with and struggling with struggling with in my life. No, nobody came back and showed me how to overcome some fears and how, how to be able to deal with certain things that, that I've been struggling with in my mindset. I don't want any man to be able to say, based upon the tenure and the time that I'm able to be alive, no man will be able to say, my, my heart compassion is no one will be able to say they've been left behind. Because there's no reason for you to be left behind. So I want you to join me in this challenge. Join me in this journey. I'm excited that I'm back and I'm promising you, I got stuff I want to be able to share and, and things that I know will help us to be able to get to the place that we're designed and destined to be. And I just want you to know the heartbeat of what this is. Focus on greatness podcast is a podcast for men, just like you, for people just like you designed to make sure that we leave no man behind. I don't want no man to feel they can't have, they don't have anybody that they can communicate with. They don't have nobody that they can relate to. They don't have nobody that they feel like can be able to help them. They don't feel, they feel like they're alone in this journey. We started off this whole conversation with me reading an article about some military men that this has become their mantra of life. This is not even something that is that is a part of their books and laws and, and what they teach in military school. That's what we read. But this is a part of their heartbeat. And their heartbeat says, we leave no man behind. So the man that's injured and the man that's in the sitting in the midst of a war that's hurting and in pain or feeling by himself while he's shooting and dealing with the enemies every single day. That man, for that moment, feels like he's being left behind. The man that's struggling right now in his marriage or struggling in, in relationships and they know and they feel like they can't communicate to nobody else. They feel like they can't tell nobody else because no one will understand. They don't want to feel and have people feel like they are weak because they're communicating how, much, how painful their life is right now. That man, I don't want you to feel left behind. The man, I've talked to men. I've talked to men that, that were going through financially and was trying to keep it together financially. And they, they got to a point, but because they felt by themselves, they felt like they were all alone. They got to a point to where they said it was, I would rather, I would rather my family be okay. So I, I'm going to choose to try to kill myself so that at least they can get the insurance money. This, these, these are thoughts that men are struggling and going through. Why? Because they feel like they're in this thing by themselves. And I'm saying, leave no man behind. No man should feel like they are alone in this journey called life. Everybody's not struggling every day. Yes, there are days that you're going to have a great moment and a great day. There are days that you're going to be, you're going to have an excellent time and, and you're going to feel loved and you're going to feel appreciated and you're going to feel joy. You're going to feel like you know what you're supposed to be doing every single day and you know what you're going after. You, you're succeeding in life. All of those things sound good and are great. But what happens when you're making the money? You're creating the businesses. But you still feel something is aching inside and you can't understand it and you don't know who to go to you don't know who to talk to so you keep it to yourself and you bottle that pain up and you keep bottling it until one day it becomes your frustration until one day you feel like you want to pop and the only reason why you did all of that and you held all that in is not because the pain wasn't real 
Not because the scenario wasn't what the scenario was. Not because any of those things. It's because you felt like you were in this portion of your life alone. You felt like you was doing this by yourself. I love what I do. I love being able to help men. I love being able to see men that I know that are going through some things that they don't communicate to their wives, that they don't communicate to their family. And I can see it. I can see the men that are struggling and going through life by themselves. And the reality is they don't have to. So I have pushed myself that when I see these type of men, if I have any wisdom or anything that I can do, sometimes I might not even have the, in, the, the wisdom or the teaching or the instruction that I can give to that specific man. Sometimes it's just, hey, man, I just want you to know that I'm here. You're not alone. So let this be the heartbeat. Let this be the mindset. Let this be the way that you start conducting yourselves with the desire, with the passion of saying, listen, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm doing, no matter where, where I am in life, I'm not doing this thing by myself. And I'm not going to leave you behind. And if I see you going through something, I'm going to help you. If I can't, I'm going to do whatever I possibly can to make sure that you're supported, that you got your strength, that you got your, you got the energy you need, the wisdom that you need, the, the, the tools that you need to do this thing called life. I'm not going to let you be able to go through this thing by yourself. We have seen this over and over and over again. Where we walk past people on a daily basis. We walk past sometimes even family, sometimes even friends. And we watch people struggle. We watch people go through. My wife would tell you, sometimes I'm, I'm so much into helping people grow and develop. Sometimes I can be, I, I mean, you know, she called me gullible at times. Because my heart is, you shouldn't be left behind. There's something in you. You have something great within you. You have something powerful within you. You just get enough water. You just get enough instructions. You get enough guidance. You get enough support system. You get, you get the right people and environment around you. You will grow and flourish and become something better than you could ever imagine. So no, I'm not going to leave you behind. For the person that has gotten to this point of this conversation, I want you to understand and hear me, hear me clearly. You're not in this alone. No matter where you're watching this, no matter where you're listening to this conversation, you're not by yourself. And I want you to understand the importance of recognizing you're not by yourself. And most importantly, you don't have to do this alone. You have everything within you that is needed for you to become the greatest person ever, the greatest version of yourself. Within you is truly, it is greatness. Within you is the thing that someone in your journey needs. Within you is the wisdom that a young man that is watching you from a distance need. You never know. I, 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 used, to, I used to hate this phrase when I was younger. Um, you never know who's watching you. I, I used to hate that because in my mind, who was watching me? And probably one day I'm going to deal with this, which, which I am. Is this aspect of feeling like we're not good enough. Feeling like we're, we're not qualified enough. 
for someone to be able to observe and say that you're an example in their life. And some other pieces that go along with this. But for years, I struggled with that concept. And so what I would do for years is I, I would shun away from being able to give advice or speaking into people's lives because I felt like I was not qualified. I was not good enough to be able to do that. Until I realized, until I realized that, listen, I, whatever I have within me, whatever wisdom, whatever guidance, what, whatever experiences that I've had, what, whatever I got, I can be able to pour into, give you, so you don't feel that you're in this one alone. But the other thing is so that you do not have to be left behind. One of the one of the things that um, and I, I'm in here and this is no shade on my mom because I love her. I love her greatly. One of the things that I that I hated um, was when I was younger, I want to say probably like in fourth or fifth grade. Uh, I remember I was um, going to our daycare, our, our, our church's uh, academy. And while I was in there. I. Basically, I almost pa I passed the grade. I passed the I passed the grade, but my mom made the decision to leave me behind because she felt like I was not ready for the next level, and so I was always a year behind in my class, <laughs> and I hated it. I felt like I I was I was older than a, a majority of the people in my class, and 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 I always felt like I was I was not. I was I didn't fit in the place that I was in. I didn't fit in the environment. And it was all these things that I was going through all of my all these school years. I'm going through every year, all these years, and I'm always feeling like I'm that I've been left behind. Then I'm getting now in high school and now it's time for getting close to where you're watching these seniors and, and all of these people do what they do. And I'm watching the, the, the senior class that I'm supposed to be in with the people that are my age that are walking across a stage that I'm supposed to and I'm feeling like I'm left behind. And then I realized that some of those same people that went in front of me, some of those same people in those moments where I was feeling left behind, I was still getting pulled. I was still getting pushed. I was still getting poured into one place after another in my life, one area after another in my life. I was having people make sure that they poured into my life so that I was not left behind. I'm being very honest. Sometimes because I felt like I was left behind. I didn't take certain things serious. And I felt like I just had time. Felt like I'll never be good at that, so why even try? Felt like uh, the relationships would be what it is. Why even? Why even try to develop? I don't have these skills. I don't have these tools. And so I, I kept feeling in some seasons of my life that I was because I was feeling like I was being left behind. It was like, why try? Because me, me even trying to do that is more painful because I feel like I won't be good at that. So I don't want this story for you. I don't want this testimony for your journey. I don't want this to be something that, that you are remembered for. What I want you to be remembered for is the person that walked in their fullness, the, 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 the man that was the greatest father he could be, the greatest husband he could be, the greatest friend he could be, the greatest worker he could be, the one that created the greatest thing that he could ever create. And they, they remember how great you were because why? You wasn't left behind. I'm going to end with this story um, before as we end. One of the greatest mentors that I had um, was my uncle, my uncle Charles Tedder. 
AKA for some people that knew him was Peter. And he's a great testimony for me. He was raised, born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio, raised in the streets of Cleveland, Ohio, did whatever he did in his journey in his life, had some falling outs and had some, you know, different things that he experienced in life and did different struggles that he had in his journey. And then he leaves out of Cleveland and comes to Texas. Fish literally out of water. And the man that I would say more so that my mother knew, the street guy, the, the man that understood that, that, that whole world that he was in, she watched his journey one year after another, one moment after another, being street raged, learning how to do life based upon street philosophy and now being poured into by this man and by this man and this man and showing him how to be able to do all these different things that one day he got poured in so much. This is a man that you would think would be feeling like he is left behind and watching these men in, in his life and people around him do all these great things. Then one day, one day he walks into his call. One moment after another, and one man after another, and one person after another, he's pouring into and impacting and making sure that they are never left behind <laughs> in any area of their lives. And the reason why I share this story is because of this. No matter where you start, no matter where you are, when we walk in this context that we can't do this thing called life by ourselves, when we walk in this mindset that no man will be left behind, when we start walking in this context that we, I'm going to pour into you what I got, and that man over there will pour into you what he got. And we'll all start pouring into each other. And, and we don't know where that person will end up just by you walking in this context of no man left behind. My uncle, Pastor Charles Anthony Tedder, impacted more lives because people took the time to pour in, because people made sure that he was not left behind. He impacted more lives and the echo of his life is still walking out even today because he made sure that no man was left behind. And I am a result of that man stating no man will be left behind. So he'll call me and say, hey, Rody, I need you to make sure you get. You need to start reading these type of books. Why don't you start doing this type of thing? Why don't you look into this? Why? Because he was pouring into areas in my life that he knew that I needed, that I was empty in. I needed guidance in. I needed tools for. So now I get the opportunity to get a platform and a moment and a time and, a, and to be able to say, I'm not going to leave you behind. But I'm going to make sure that I pour into you everything that I got. I'm going to make sure that I bring people to this platform that I know will be able to give you the insight and the wisdom that you need. I'm going to make sure that, 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 we, that we create and cultivate a tribe of men and people together that can pour into and support each other as we go through this journey called life. Because why? I am determined that we leave no man behind. I love every single one of y'all. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for watching. For those that are checking me out and being on this live on this night, I am excited about this journey that we are all on and that we're doing together. Because remember, we can't do this thing called life by ourselves. The only way that we're going to do this effectively as we have to do it together. I love every single one of y'all. Continue to be great and continue to be a part of this tribe.
Talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.